with the introduction of PCG biomes, many of you have wanted to create different floating islands and scatter the same biome setup onto random props around your level, but it is currently limited to just landscapes. Well, I found a way to actually have it work with actual static meshes and the like, and today I'm going to show you how to modify your current setup to accommodate that. Now, this tutorial does assume that you have a basic knowledge of how PCG biomes are set up and what everything is. If you're new to it and you're just going into PCG biomes for the first time, check out the video right here in the card and it should tell you everything you need to know as your baseline for PCG biomes. Assuming that you're familiar with PCG biomes as a general concept, here we are in the demo level. And this is the one we're going to be using kind of to demonstrate what it is, just because it's very easy to grab some things that we need for it. So the first thing to go over is, well, how do we actually modify where things spawn? Everything, single thing that you spawn with PCG biomes is actually controlled with a spawner and that spawner can be modified. So if we go here in the outliner and I just go down to our biome setups, for example, this broadleaf forest, and I click on it, you can see we have the definition file. We have the asset, which is actually the basically spawning algorithm and hit the runtime assets. Now we're going to focus on this broadly forest in the assets. If I open it up, everything's going to be closed over, but we can open it. We can open index zero, for example, and we can see this spawning, this spruce tree. We have a bunch of options for it. If you want to modify how it spawns, where it spawns, etc. But the main thing we want to know is this generator. This is what controls how and where it spawns. So if we go ahead and open it, you can see inside of here, we can get access to the generator graph. So if I go ahead and open it up, this is the graph that controls the actual spawning of everything. So you can see it's getting the bounding shape where it needs to, it's getting the landscape data and it's sampling it. And then it's projecting it all onto the landscape data and then outputting it. Now this is going through the entire process and this is just like a small node in the full tree, but this is where it all happens. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if I go ahead and navigate to this file, this file is in the biome sample content folder because it's part of that sample content. So you could make your own setup, of course, entirely. You don't need to even use this or you can modify it. Now, keep in mind, because this is in the plugin content folder, if you modify these files, it is modifying it for everything. So you should actually put it inside of your actual content folder where your project is. You shouldn't be modifying the actual plugin files directly. Now, in my case, I'll be modifying them directly for the tutorial just to make life easier for this demonstration. But again, make a copy of it. Don't make a mistake of, oh no, I made a mistake. And now, you know, everything and every single project that you're using it is now having this issue. So now that we know where the generators are, how are we actually going to modify it to spawn on other different things? Well, what we can do is create an area where we can basically project points down on to our static meshes and any static mesh, as long as it has some criteria that we want it to do. Because of course, if you, for example, had a nice floating island with a house on it, you don't really want to spawn trees on the house. You probably just want to have them on the ground and maybe in only certain areas, etc. So what we're going to do is just create a blueprint actor by right clicking, going to blueprint class, creating an actor. And this is going to be our biome projector because effectively this is where things are going to be projected down from. And this is going to be a very simple setup. All I'm going to do is add ourselves a spline. And then I'm going to just make it a nice large shape by selecting this and holding alt and just dragging out some points to just get ourselves something. And then on the detail panel, I can go search for closed and get ourselves a closed loop. And there we go. We just have a nice large shape. Now this is going to be very tiny in the level, but this is good enough. Under self, you could search for tag and let's give it a tag. I'll just call it projector because it's going to be projecting downwards. And that's all we need here. Go ahead and compile it. So for demonstrations, I have a mega scans rock here that I'm going to drag out. I'll just bring this up into the sky. I'll scale it quite large. Now let's assume that this is going to be our floating island. One thing to keep in mind is when you're using the system, it still needs to be in the bounds of your PCG graph. So if I go ahead and select our PCG biome core here, you can see it is currently above. So what we want to do is with it selected, go ahead and just scale it up like so. It's going to take a moment to recalculate, but then it is going to be good. But now you can see it is very large. You don't need to make it this large, but this is just as a safety precaution in case you want to move it way higher. 
So now that we have this room, we can go ahead and move it up. And what I want to do is go to our little blueprint that we created. I can drag it out and you can see it is quite small. So let's go ahead and just position it. And then I can select the points and extend it. So it kind of covers this entire area because let's say we want to project it on top of everything. So they should take care of it. But of course, this isn't doing anything. But now we can go to the generator and make use of it. So over here in our biome generator, what we can do is right click and get spline data and in the actor filter instead of self we want to get all world actors and we actually want to filter it because maybe you have others splines so what we actually want to do is actually give it a tag because that's going to be the easiest way of doing this put in our tag projector now we want to be able to select multiple in case you do have multiple areas you want to select but this should be good so with this get spline data get ourselves a spline sampler and in the spline sampler, instead of on spline, we want to do on interior. And then we want to check unbounded. Now, if I go ahead and sample it with a D, you can see that it is quite dense. In fact, it is way too dense. And we know that because if we sample this surface sampler by also hitting D, you can see down below, this is the density of these points. It isn't quite as much as it is up here. So we kind of want to match this. So for this fine sampler, instead of interior sample spacing and interior border sp sample spacing being 100, I'm going to set the interior sample spacing to be 200, which will make the points 200 units apart. And I'll change the actual point size to be 50. This is an approximate. You could, of course, modify for your own because at this point, it is no longer required that you match what is there. I'm doing it to kind of get the same general sense of the points and where they are relative to where they are in the actual original setup. It is not required. You could go crazy. You can go much higher or lower density, entirely up to you. But you can see now we have these points kind of a little more spread out and it's a little better represents these. Now, these are also a little bit offset and everything, and you can add that in. It is not required, but you absolutely can. But now that we have this, we now need to get these points on top of this mesh. So just like we did with this actual spline, we need to give the mesh a tag because we need to only project it on certain things. We don't want to project it on everything. I'm going to select it, search for tag. I'm giving it a tag and I'll call it projected because this is the thing that is being projected on top. of. To make my life easier, I'll go ahead and copy projected. And now we can go ahead and take this and project it. So if I come out of here, I search for projection, we can project it on top of something. So to do that, we can right click and search query. Now you can do world volumetric query, but what we want is world ray hit query. And what this is basically doing is doing line traces effectively from each of these points. Now there's a lot of settings here, but the main one we want to go is under advanced. We want to have the collision channel being world static in our case. Instead of simple collisions, we want to trace complex. If in your project you have set up your simple collisions properly and things you don't need complex, of course you don't need to use it. But in my case, because I'm using Premiate Megascans assets, this will get us so all the points are on top of the rock, no matter what its deformation is. And the other thing is under filtering, we can actually specify an actor tag filter. So under here, we can go ahead and say include tagged. And basically anything in this list will be included. Otherwise it'll be ignored. And only here, I'll go ahead and put in projected. Now we can ignore landscape hits, but our landscape doesn't have this tag. But if we wanted to, we could go ahead and ignore it as well. But with this set up, we can go ahead and select this and do projection target as our projection. And now if I press D on our projection, we can take a look and you can see all of these points are now projected right on top of it. At this point, we can do whatever we want with them. We can make it more advanced. We can make it less advanced. We can do all sorts of filters. We're already getting the points on, which is important. So now that we have this, we want to basically combine the two because we don't want to lose the original setup. So what we're going to do is take this and we're going to grab ourselves a merge node, merge points. So we're going to merge our projection points with our surface sampler, and it's going to go inside of the spatial noise. I'm going to plug that in. And now if you come here, you can see, well, nothing has happened. Something should have happened. In fact, if I take both of these things and move them like towards the ground here, you can see not only is nothing happening, nothing is even regenerating. And that's because for some reason, this section here does not automatically regenerate. I can go ahead and just sample it and unsample it, for example. And all of a sudden you can see it has foliage on top of it. Well, that's odd. Why wasn't it on top? In fact, if we move it back up into the sky the same way we had it, and then in, in this case, let's in, instead now go to the PCG biome core. I mean, go to our biome core and just go ahead and do a cleanup and generate and should regenerate the entire thing. So then we would see 
the points up here, correct? No. And this is why I need to explain to you guys how this is actually being done currently. The way it's being done is the lower it is to the ground, well, the more points you're going to get because of this thing inside of the biome core under parameter overrides called the biome blending range. Now, don't worry, I do have a workaround for this to get you what you want, but let me explain this first. Basically, not only is the biome blending range working between each biome to blend between them, but it's also working vertically. So if I go in and modify this blending range and make it 25,000 and press enter, it'll go ahead and recalculate everything. And then all of a sudden you can see it is going all the way up here. Here's our foliage all the way up here. And it is taking the information from that biome below. Now, this might not work for you because, well, you're now blending the biome so much. And maybe in your case, that is way too high. You have your islands way in the sky and you have your blending. You just It's too much. You want more distinct biomes. So maybe you want to keep your 2,500 as it was before, but you still want the information up there. Well, don't worry, there's a way of doing that. And if you guys are enjoying the tutorial so far, I would love to hit the like button. If you're new, consider subscribing for more tutorials like this. Let's get back to it. These are basically just splines that contain the actual biome information. In fact, right, if I move this around, you can see that despite this being a desert biome, it is replacing that area with this actual forest. As it recalculates, there it is, it has moved this forest. But that also means that I can go ahead and reuse this up in the sky. So what do we do? We go ahead and just copy it above and you can see already where I've moved it, we are getting this biome information. So if I move it over, you're seeing this is where the forest is coming in with all the same filters as it had before. And in fact, what I can do is just hold Alt and copy another one. And maybe in this one, instead of broadly forest, let's go get a Coniferous forest. And then all of a sudden you can see here, we're getting the two types of forest all together with all the same functionality and our points here. And it's just happening right on top. Now, again, you can modify these points even further. You can have more or less points as you need. But as you see, we're already getting this and it's entirely independent of the biomes below. Now, one other thing is, as you see, when I move these two biome generators, it is actually going to regenerate the entire thing. So I've gone on and moved it and you can see it is regenerating and it is all great. But if I move this actual rock, nothing regenerates because unfortunately, if I move this or if I move the actual projection spline, nothing regenerates. And maybe we've mod made a modifications and we wanted to regenerate. But right now, the way we need to do that is go to the, the PCG biome core, scroll down all the way to the biome core, and then right do a full regenerate by doing a cleanup and then generate. And then we have it, right? That's too much. It'd be nice to do it from the actual object you're just modifying really quickly. So let's go ahead and create ourselves a actor component that we can just attach to absolutely anything that will regenerate our PCG graph. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and get ourselves a blueprint class. And this is going to be an actor component, which you can grab right here. I'm going to call it AC underscore biome core refresher. And then when you have it open it up, you can have this menu here. There's no construction script or anything, but we don't need it. We're going to create a new function. And this is going to just be refresh biome core. And what we need is a reference to our biome core. And we can do that by adding a new reference to our biome core, by adding a variable, calling it biome core. And we need to give it a type. Now our biome core here is a blueprint, so we can go ahead and reference it. So we can go ahead and left click on this Boolean and search for BP PCG biome core. You can see it right here. And we can change it to an object reference, make it instance editable by just clicking this eye icon. And now we can go ahead and utilize this. So if I hold control and go get ourselves a get node. And what we want to do is get the information that we had in the biome core. So if I select it here, we can scroll down and it has this biome core. And that's where all the information is. This is effectively our PCG graph. This is just called biome core. So from here, I'm going to get biome core. And now I can drag out of here and search for generate. Now we want to check force to be on and then plug in this refresh biome core into it. And the only thing else is if you click on refresh biome core or you select the function on the left, either one will work. You want to check call in editor in the detail panel. This will effectively make it a button. So with this all in, I'll go ahead and compile. And now with our actual rock selected, you can do it for absolutely anything. 
we need to add this actor component to it. Now, there's multiple ways of doing it. You can click add here and search for refresher and it'll come up and click add it that way. Or you can drag it onto it as well. Either one will work and you can see it now has this AC BIME core refresher. So if I go ahead and select it, we now need to select the BIME core. Now you can sample it with a pick actor, but that's kind of a pain. But what we can do is just left click on this none and it just gives us only the PCG BIME cores in the level. So you can just easily select it here. And now all we need to do is with it selected, move whatever we want, however we want it. Let's say I'm actually modifying the angle here and this is actually how I want it to be. Now nothing is refreshed, but we can go into our AC BIME core refresher and just click refresh BIME core. And you can see it is now refreshing and there it is. It has now updated it to our new setup. I can put it back to where it was, maybe scoosh it over, maybe rotate it a little. Maybe this is how I want it. And again, I'm core refresh. So we don't have to go through that entire menu every single time. And you can add this to absolutely any actor in your entire level. This is now an actor component. You don't need to create a blueprint for it. You just drag it on there, select the biome core from the dropdown, and just click refresh. And pretty much from anywhere in the level, you can just refresh your entire biome. But like most things with the PCG biomes, if you're using its native stuff, it is going to automatically refresh, but if for some reason you want to force refresh, you can just add it to absolutely anything and it'll do so. But just like that, we now have full control over different the, the two biomes and where they are. As you can see, we now have this biome here, biome here. And just to note that if we do go to the biome core and go to our biome menu, we can go ahead and change the biome blending range, for example, to zero. I'll go ahead and regenerate. And now you can see it is now only appear in certain areas because the blending is far less. So you can control pretty much this blending even up here. Again, if I put this back up to 2500, it'll go ahead and refresh it and it'll blend more again. There he is. As always, the project files for this are going to be available on my Patreon, where you can join these awesome people right here in supporting what I do. It means a lot and helps me out tremendously. And if you'd like to join the community, the link to the Discord is down below, where you can chat with more awesome, like-minded people like yourself. Thank you again to my Patreons, and let's get back to it. There we go. Now we have floating islands with actual foliage on top. And just keep in mind that there is a limit to this distance as the last thing, that if you might need to put this actual projection a little bit closer, so you can't have like these all the way up here with it being lower, you might need to position it higher or lower relative to this actual spline. But on that, you can now control pretty much anything you want. And if you guys are interested in more PCG 5.4 tutorials about the PCG biomes, check out this video right here where I show you how to create your own data assets with the new functionality of 5.4.